Americans are, of course, divided in how they vote, always have been, though. Increasingly, they're divided on pretty much everything else as well. Some are blockbusters, professional sports, even what you eat for dinner, who you date, all now political battlefields. Writing over at The Federalist, John Daniel Davidson says both sides of the political divide are radicalizing, but the radicalization on the left is more dangerous, more prone to violence, more likely to cause a culture war that is, quote, going to encompass everything and that will never end. John Daniel Davidson joins us tonight. John, thanks for coming on. So the core of your piece is a response to a new Pew poll on polarization in American life. So g give us the, the quick overview of how deep these divides are. Sure. The Pew poll is a series of 10 questions that the Pew Research Center has been asking Americans for uh, a number of years, going back to 1994. And what they found is uh, over time, uh, the medians, the average answers that uh, Republicans and Democrats will agree to, different statements, have moved farther and farther to the extreme. So yeah. what used to be a very common middle ground uh, has now moved out to the edges. And uh, the, the numbers of things that Americans agree on uh, is fewer and fewer, and the gaps between, uh, the, between the two groups is, is widening. And you can kind of see, it's fascinating to see it over time, you know, uh, from 1994 to 2004, it was more or less the same. And from 2004 to 2017, boy, it's changed a lot. And yeah, it, it really represents the, the divisions that we see everywhere now in American society. So to sum it up in a kind of blunt way, Conservatives seem annoyed by liberals. Liberals <laughs> seem at total war with conservatives. So you have this amazing quote from ta Coates, who's a writer, not a very fluent writer, but uh, something of a moral leader now <laughs> on the left. Um, right. And he's got a new book out, I think, last week uh, about race. And you quote an interview that he did with Ezra Klein over at Vox, where Klein asked him, you know, how can we get rid of white supremacy? Characterize the answer he gave. He more or less said that he didn't think that we could get rid of white supremacy without something like the French Revolution. And this is something that he does a lot. He kind of faints toward violence and then backs off, right? Uh, but, but the implication is clear that he thinks America is an endemically white supremacist country uh, that is irredeemably racist and that the only thing that will reform uh, the racism of America is a kind of a violent revolution and upheaval. A he never comes out and says it, but he but he implies it everywhere. For our viewers who don't believe it, it's worth and I, he, his his speaking and writing styles are are so hard to take that I'm not going to inflict them on our viewers. But it's <laughs> worth actually reading. But I guess what was so striking about this? This is a guy who won the MacArthur Genius Award, I think, who's really feted by. This, you know, the intellectual left is a deeply serious person, someone to listen to, someone whose words are indispensable. And he's suggesting that blood may be the only way to atone for America's sins. That seems a different le level to me. It, it is a different level, Tucker. But all of this comes down to a fundamental question. Is the Declaration of Independence true or not? Uh, and, and, you know, is America good or bad? And the right. problem with the left and the reason that the left's radicalization is more dangerous than radicalization uh, among Republicans is that the left answers that question, no, the Declaration of Independence is not true. It's a cynical That's document. Right. No, America is not a good place. It's not a place where we can get along as a big, diverse group of people. It's a it's a zero sum game Scary. of political tribalism. That's well, the fundamental difference between left and right. And the left increasingly has concluded that they can't share a country with exactly. people that disagree with them. Well, the, you know, those are the mathematics of identity politics, right there. Nicely put. Terrifying right. too. John, thank you. Thanks, Tucker.